Alrighty, are we just about ready to get started? I think we are. It's been already, gosh, six minutes, almost seven. I should really get good at actually starting the stream on time, but yeah. Let's get right into it, and here we go. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to DS Music. Yeah, I guess I'm telling that to myself too at the same time. Gosh, it's been forever since... I did this thing, you know, the YouTube thing. Wow. Anyways, greetings to everyone on Twitch. Greetings also to everyone that's on YouTube.com. Um, luckily, Restream decided to work again today and actually have the streams, like, do the thing, so that's neat. Uh, yeah, Tim, apparently you say there's a little bit of a delay between YouTube and, um, YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, I adjusted the latency settings to low for YouTube, because last time for the Metroid stream I had normal latency, which had like minutes of delay, and that was like, I couldn't respond to anyone. Now I have it set to low latency, just to see like, how it turns out, see if I can respond faster. There's also an ultra low latency mode, which I'm gonna try that next time, but for now, I'm just gonna try this, just to see if YouTube can handle it, because I don't know, but anyways, yeah, so um... Let's see, how is everyone doing on this fried Friday afternoon? I was originally planning on doing this, like, stream on, like, Saturday, but since I'm kind of busy with, like, some interviews and stuff later today and later on Saturday, I was like, you know what, might as well try it out right after the video, see what happens. So, y'all should let me know, what time would you like these DS dissects to happen? They'll probably be, I'll probably go for, like, half hour, 45 minutes-ish tops, it won't be, like, anything like the two-hour streams I have at nights, and, um, yeah, so what time would be best for y'all? Would it be right after a video, like, now, or in the evening, or on Saturday, or, or what? Let me know in the whatever kind of comments or chats or whatever you like. What's your favorite quirk of MIDI? Oh, Q, how's it going? Glad you could join in. Uh, what's my favorite quirk of MIDI? Um, well, I know what my least favorite quirk is, at least. Um, so recently, I was trying to upload a video to Twitter, and you know how in the Twitter videos I put like a little, a little MIDI track going by? Well, I've seen a couple people post that, and they have like really pretty colored MIDIs. I'm like, those like, MIDIs look so nice. I wish I could make a MIDI that looks that colorful instead of like the ugly logic green and blue but I couldn't figure out how to recolor my midis so my least favorite quirk of midis is that you can't recolor them in the DAW which makes me very... <laughs> it makes me disappointed I know you have my aesthetic, my midi aesthetic if you know what I mean gotta have nice red violet through orange midis and yo King Gordo how's it going glad you could join in it seems like it would be most convenient after a video I mean, yeah, it seems convenient, like, oh, you released a video, then people who come to see the video early can also come to see the dissection. But then again, there's some people who like to watch, you know, like, in later in the day, during dinner time, maybe on Saturday while they're working, and then they wouldn't be able to see the dissection video until later. I don't know, because they could watch it live, or they could watch it, like, afterwards. Hard to tell for now. We'll just have to see how the, um... Let's have to see how people react. Two hours of theory dissecting? Oh, <laughs> yes, Tim. We're going to go full on board. Okay, so you see this this choice of note here, using the Phrygian mode and um, modal mixture with the... Um, in the tuning system of the Pythagorean tuning system in particular, we'll go into all the little details of music theory. But yeah, um... So basically, a quick rundown of how DS dissection works. So I'm going to just go through and say, like, here's the piece. Here's what I was thinking while arranging the piece. This is what I did in the piece. Here's a couple little things and neat tips and tricks, which I thought was neat. And now y'all can know, because there's always been, like, arrangements where I feel like, man, I put so much work into this arrangement, but I don't feel like people notice, like, the small details. And I just, I feel like the small details, like, really bring out, like, the some of the best parts of the piece and it could really be helpful for like other arrangers going forward to help them learn how to like make fun little arrangements and stuff not saying i'm like the best arranger of all time or anything no no i got ways to go before i'm freaking masashi hamauzu or anything but um just little bits and tricks from like you know me 
because that's neat. And of course, if y'all have any questions about music theory or piano or whatnot, let me know in the chat. And this is supposed to be for like old skill levels. So I'll be going in depth from anything from like, yeah, I play these notes. These notes sound happy. Yay. To things like, okay, so here we have a little um, major minor seventh third inversion in order to in order to a phrase and have the chords lead up to this deceptive cadence and all that nonsense, you know, the nonsense, the big theory, giga brain nonsense. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, me and my two brain cells are working overtime today. So, you know, no Lydian Mixolydian. Gosh, man, I'm actually pr practicing a piece right now where the right hand's in Mixolydian and the left hand's in Phrygian. And it makes my brain hurt. Anyway, we should probably get into it because it's been a good 13 minutes and we haven't even actually started. Also, shoutouts to Bert Jed Zote too for following on Twitch like five days ago or something. If they're here, thank you. But yeah, let's get right into it. So um, let's see how are we gonna start off. Well, first of all, let's start off with the piece. This is Lawn Lawn Ranch from Ocarina of Time as you can see by what's on the screen. Um, the reason I did this piece is because Pixel Mixers, which is a VGM group that I'm part of, like a year and a half ago, they started working on this on this Ocarina of Time and Majora's, Ask, Majora's Mask dual album. And I was like, oh, well, let's see. I want to join that. What track can I do? What's something like that can get, I can put like a calm piano spin on or something. And I thought, you know, Lawn Lawn Ranch, it's like, sounds pretty homey. I think I can do that. And so I recorded this like a year and a half ago, which is why you see in the background, this is my apartment from co-op a year and a half ago. And I'm wearing like a nice dress shirt because I just came back from my engineering co-op and I was like, okay, now I, got, I just got back from work, <laughs> time to record. Man, but yeah, and then the album got delayed for like, uh, gosh, months. But that's fine. It got released recently. And there's a link in the YouTube description to the album. Plus, it's, it's completely a completely free album. It's like hours worth of tracks. And uh, you can download it all for free. So that's pretty neat. And uh, definitely some bangers on there that I would recommend. But we should get into what I thought of this piece. So, before we get into the arrangement, I want to just look at the original track. And some of the takeaways that I got from it. So let's just listen to some good old fashioned Ocarina of Time music. And let me know if the audio balance is like fine and whatnot. Giddy up. <laughs> All right, so right away, let's do some key takeaways from the beginning. So, the two most important things that I at least took away from listening to it is like, so you have the beginning, starts with that bass line with the ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da da ba da dum. It has this sort of like galloping bass line, like bum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum. Insert a. Any Monty Python fans? Can you get can, you, can I get some coconuts in the chat? <laughs> clip clop, clip clop, and yeah, you know, since it's like it's got this like clip clop rhythm in the background, and that makes sense because like Long Long Ranch and like cows and horses and stuff. So I wanted to incorporate that rhythm somehow. I wanted to incorporate the um. Here in the background is that little like slide guitar. And the slide guitar sort of like incorporates its own like little counter melody. It's like in response to the main melody, which I thought was really neat. So it's like, you know what? I'm, I want to incorporate some call and response, putting some counter melodies and whatnot. Thank you for the Tacokinus sim. I'll do Monty Python cover someday. Anyways, oh wait, one more thing about the arrangement is that the original instrument that's playing the melody, or singing the melody, is a synthesized voice. Now there's, what I like to think about in music is that there's three types, main types of music. There's songs, there's dances, and then there's other. Songs are like very lyrical, very sweet. They flow from one phrase to another very, very delicately. Then you have dances, which are more like upbeat, rhythm driving, 
more ac- more accents on like the beats to place where your the beats to place your feet rather than like the lyrical quality. And then there's other, which is just like I feel like there was a term for it, but I forgot what it was. So I'm just gonna go with other. And this tune, I felt like, well, you have a singer, you have very like lyrical legato lines, and uh, yeah, so I want to make it sort of like a song in a way. Want to make give it that song like quality. And now the other, the other other thing that I wanted to put in this arrangement is I wanted to put some like extra context behind it. Like we could do, anyone can make a cover of Long Long. I just get, get, get your guitar out and just play ba da 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 ba da ba da da. I was thinking, but wait a minute, let's think about it. What happens to Long Long Ranch after Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask? It gets freaking invaded by aliens <laughs> and then freaking destroyed and left to be in ruins. Like I don't know if. Y'all have seen, um, let me see, Lawn, I haven't even hold up this picture yet. Lawn Lawn Ranch, uh, Breath of the Wild. Like, freaking, it's just freaking dead. <laughs> Look, it's so sad. This is so sad. Can we get F's in the chat for Lawn Lawn Ranch? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to sort of incorporate that, like, oh, well, Lawn Lawn Ranch is, like, gone now, but... There was a time back in our childhoods, in like Ocarina of Time, when it was like thriving, and we got like horses and stuff. Gone, gone ranch. <laughs> That's a good. Hi, hey, NC. How's it going? Oh, and thank you for the F's in chat. Yes. <laughs> Big sad. But yes, yeah, so that's, that's what I want to think about. I want to think about like, what if I made an arrangement from the point of view of a person who, in the modern day, is looking over Lawn Lawn Ranch? It's like deserted, no one there, ghost town. But then they're like, thinking back to like, the good old days, the, the good old boomer days of, of, you know, of, uh, of, yeah, it's heyday, if you, so to say. Gosh, I'm just full of dad puns today, I'm sorry. So yeah, now let's listen to the actual piece and hear where that comes in. So you notice, there's no melody at first. It's just chords. And right there, that's where the melody first comes in. You have chords that vaguely resemble the background chords of Lon Lon Ranch, which is like this D major. Do do do. Do do do. That's A augmented. Do do do. Do do, and then that's where the melody comes in. And it's like you have these big airy chords, which what I mean by airy I just mean like there's lots of open space between them. It's like taking up an entire like top half of the piano. It feels very like dreamlike in a way. It's supposed to be like a person like reminiscing back, like thinking about the chords of the song, remembering how the song goes, remembering how those memories were like, huh? Huh? And then uh, the melody starts coming in in bits and pieces. Like here. Yeah, so as you can see, like, the melody, like, comes in in bits and pieces more and more as each, like, phrase comes along. First chord reminded me a lot of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it sort of has that Breath of the Wild, like, like I said, I wanted to base it off of the Breath of the Wild incarnation of Lon Lon Ranch. It has that, like, airy, ambient vibe. Which I like, you might be thinking, oh, well, how does it become airy and ambient? Well, there is uh, some, like, techniques I use, which generally, generally what I find to make, um, to make arrangements sound more, like, vague is to sort of hide whether the chords are major and minor and include lots of extensions. Like, what I mean, like, the first chord here... Those are literally only D, E, and A. That's the first, the second, and the fifth of a D major chord. But you don't know it's D major. You only know it's D, E, and A. Which could be D major or D minor. So it sort of has like this vague, misty quality about it, you know what I mean? And that was also, um, was that also something? Let me see. Doo -doo. 
that's that was also uh, this chord right here. It could be D major, uh, D D um, dominant seventh. It could be D minor seventh because there's a C D E and A, but there's no F sharp or F natural. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Sus. Yeah, it's sort of sus chord. I mean, there's no G in it. Like I feel like a sus chord would be D G A. This is more like a ninth chord with no third, sort of in a way. Oh, hi, hey there, Nathaniel Piano. Probably a question for later, but I'm curious how you chose chord substitutions and extensions in general. I like what you're saying about hiding the key notes and making me an important major minor. Yeah, that's what I'm sort of getting at. Yeah, I could go into like some of my choices and whatnot for later. And while you might say, the thing is that even though like there's some chords in this like beginning section, which they have the thirds defined in them, like. Like that chord, that's an A augmented chord with the C sharp in it. So you know it's A, but it's also an A augmented chord. And augmented chords are weird because they're part of the augmented scale, which is doesn't really belong to any particular key. You only There's only two... Let me explain augmented scale. So augmented scale is the scale that goes C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C, or C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, B, C sharp. And what's, what that chord what that means is that those scales are made of completely whole notes. Like most scales would be like whole, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, or something. But this is a scale made entirely of whole steps. And it's only two of them. So it makes the, this augment, and augmented chords are made entirely of notes from the whole tone scale. So that makes the that makes the quality of these augmented chords still give it that vague quality, even though it's technically A major augmented, but it's not really A major augmented, it's just A augmented, which is, you know, it's sort of out there. Is uh, A augmented in the original, or did you replace A major with A augmented? Let's see, um, it's da 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 I think it's in the original, I'm not sure. I'll, I think the bass line in the original is playing an augmented chord. But the way that I, the, the chords that I play in the, the, not the chords, the notes that I play in this scale, or in this arpeggio, I add in some extra notes from the whole tone scale just to make it like more ambiguous. So it's not just like, it's not just A, C sharp, F. It's A, C sharp, and F, and a B, and a G, and other notes from the whole tone scale. Yo, Logan M. Hey, how's it going? Wait, I know you from... Are you from the Celeste uh, Strawberry Jam Discord? I feel like I recognize that profile picture. And if, if not, I'm so sorry, but I, I, recognize, I recognize you somewhere. Work in progress theory for knowledge already being used. Woohoo. Let's go. You'll love to see it. Anyway, let's continue because we only got into the like, first arpeggio. It's only been, already been 25 minutes. Jeez. Also, some more wonky chords with, um... I don't know how much I want to go into, say, in-depth and, like, mention every single chord in the arpeggio. Because I feel like you already got a gist for, like, what I'm doing. I'm adding some extensions to chords. I'm taking out, like, some of the defining features of some chords. And I'm adding other features to, like, augmented chords in order to make them sound more vague. So I don't know if I want to go into like every single note, like, oh, this is a G minor sh major 7, which is weird. Or if, if people want to ask more questions about it, I can get through that later, probably. Well, that right there is literally the entire whole tone scale. But I was mentioning earlier about the whole tone scale, you hear how it has this... This dreamy quality about it, this, these edibles ain't, oh, wait a moment, sort of quality about them. Also, right here, um, what's this, what's this chord again? This is, uh, what's this, is this A add 4 over G or something? I forgot what it was. 
But also another general rule of thumb that I added in for like, if I want to make a chord sound more lovely and dreamy, just add in a major 7th or major ninth. 9 times out of 10, it's gonna sound great. It's gonna sound great, I swear. And you'll hear it a lot more, like, with the different chord extensions where I just add major 7s and 9s because they sound good. Okay, whole tone scale. Little bits of the melody spurs here and there. Now, instead of, instead of, like, the arc, not arcade, arpeggiated chords, now we have, like, full chunks. We still don't have the whole melody yet, but we're gonna have full chunks. This is, like, the memories sort of, like, recollect themselves. Alright, here's another thing I mentioned from earlier. So remember how earlier I said I wanted to include, like, how the slide guitar has these, like, little counter melodies in throughout. So here I kind of, and make uh, these sing-songy counter melodies. Here I started also incorporating those counter melodies. So if you can hear, like, the, the, the pinkies playing the melody. That whole D, B, A, D melody. And you can hear in the thumb in the right hand, it's playing this little counter melody. It goes. Do, 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 do. It's sort of like you can. Like, easy to sing, you can become it, sort of quality about it, very lyrical, very legato, and it plays after the do, 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 and which is, res which is responded to with the do, 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 do. And that's sort of starting to incorporate that, that notion of adding in the counter melodies, which like the original tune does. And then here's a place where the melody and the harmony like play together just to add some like harmonic interest. But, but, you think, oh, the, the counter melody is now merged with the melody to become a harmony. But no, then a, but then the second counter melody comes in. It's like, whoa, you just got jinxed. In the left hand, you can notice the, um, the thumb starts to play a counter melody in order to respond to the two lines in the right hand. Do, do, do. So yeah, those, those like, counter melodies, they start stacking up on each other. So it's like the memories start like coming back in, it's, like starting to remember just like the whole sing-song equality of like just being on the ranch with the folks and like having a time. The whole tone fits well with the flashback narrative. Yes, if you ever want dreamy, just you know, whole tones. Woo! Only oh, hey Levi, bad pianist didn't do backflip between each note. Would you like me to play a cover of? I could do a cover of 4 minutes and 23 seconds where I do a backflip <laughs> before playing it. I think that's the only song I'd ever play do a backflip for. Cause I don't even know how to backflip. Hit F11 if you ever stream Google Chrome. Um, I'll do that next- I'll have to figure out what that does. I'm a Windows noob. I only- I have a Mac with a Windows partition so I do not know what all my buttons- All I know is Alt F4, do not do that. <laughs> we'll stick around but you're gaming and alright, see a gamer. Have a good time. Get rid of all the extra digits that don't matter for the stream. Ah, alright. Will do. But yeah, let's get back right into it. So we had... So first we had, like, the chord. You first thought about the chords. We heard the arpeggiated chords in the beginning. Then you think about the chords, but more. And you have, like, the chunk chords with more of the melody coming. Then you think about the counter melodies. The counter melodies start coming in. And now you have a sense for, like, what the harmonic structure is like. And this is where the tune basically starts. You have a chromatic scale going down to the A dominant 7th chord, which is going to be your cadence into our first chord, which is the um which is the D major. So we start simple. You hear the galloping like rhythm in the background. And you have the melody playing in the foreground.
Also, a funny little video detail, which I thought no one, I thought was kind of neat, but it doesn't really matter, TBH. So in the beginning, you notice how, like, there's this sort of, like, faded film effect on the video, and then through this section, it, like, clears up, and you get more clarity and contrast in the video, and that little transition between faded and non-faded happens, like, when the melody first kicks in. Yeah, you see what I did there? You see what you- You see, that's just cause you were remembering. That's cause that's the merit of the, the piece and ha, huh, funny, funny, uh, funny, uh, funny motif go burr. Also, yo, Seesaw, how's it going? Glad you're in the stream. Never touched a Zelda game growing up, but I even get nostalgia with that song. Hey, don't, don't mess with us Zelda music fans. We haven't even played the games. Gosh, I've played about like, half an hour of Twilight Princess and like 10 minutes of Ocarina of Time, but don't tell anyone I said that. Okay, fine, let me try Alt, let me try F11, hope this... Alright, good. That looked like it worked. I am happy, thank you. Thank you, thank you chat for help, for the um, Windows tech support. <laughs> I am eternally grateful. You're going to give me a specific role in your server, Levi? Oh gosh, I'm already scared. Alright, so let's get right into it. So we have the galloping medley, m melody, not, the galloping bass line from the original tune. It starts to come in. You have the melody. This is like the beginnings of the memory. And then... You hear a counter melody comes in? So yeah, you have that... Do... Um, we go. Ooh, do do do... You do do... You do do... Which is supposed to sort of rep- It's not the same exact line as the, sli as the slide guitar that was in the original track, but it sort of emulates that with the way it has the legato line, like... The grace notes to sort of signify the wana -na. and I just thought this counter I, when I was originally thinking of when I was like just originally thinking of how am I gonna approach this song, sometimes I would just like hum the song to myself or like listen to the song a bunch of times and like hum along to see like what sort of harmonic lines come to my head. Like you never know like what might just stick because you're just like noodling around and you're just like trying to sing along. And you're like, oh wait. That might work with the tune. I think I'll try to stick that in there. So that's what that's where the do 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 came from. I couldn't see the chord you used, but I saw sh sharing the same F sharp for two chords. Did you intentionally do that, or just reducing movement or something else? Oh yeah, for the left hand. I see what you mean. So you have D major, A augmented. And that's the D7 over... What's the inversion? First, second, third? What's the inversion where it's over the dominant seventh? It's like a D7 over seven. And I think I... Is this what you mean right here by like... There's this chord with the F sharp? Wait. No, I don't... I don't know if that's... Something like that? Well, the, in the original track, there's a couple of times where like... The same note is played twice, just to add like harmonic uh, intro, uh, harmonic. No, oh, what's it called? Resonance, I guess. That's a two, that's a term I'm making up right now on the fly. The fourth two inversion, like V four two. I don't know if that's the official term, but if that's D seven over C, then sure, let's go with that. Anytime you hear Western Love by style like this, my mind goes to one thing: Toy Story or Three Amigos. You got a friend in me, but I but 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 <laughs> That's amazing. And then a little deviation in the left hand from the gallop harmony, just to, because like this is where the melody like takes a break. Do 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 do. It's like what do you do there? Well, I might as well add some interest by adding a little left hand lick, something lyrical, legato, something to match the tone. And then, yeah, so that's where now the, um, 
the counter melody comes in to match the harmony here. The match the melody here. And then we get to sort of like... This is like the horse section, I guess. Because like, in the beginning you're just like remembering, you just started to remember the 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 um, general details. Now you remember like a specific, a specific memory of like horse trotting. I guess I just I'm sort of thinking of like the left hand. Like you hear he has like sort of bouncy. I was thinking of, like the same sort of like horse trot like vibe to it. This part specifically reminded me of Mary Poppins. Oh yeah, this is where I'm like, let's go for the, let's flex with all the jazz knowledge that I have here. So here, let's let's look at a couple of the chords, just as a little interesting bit. I tried to make this section a bit interesting by having like different chord extensions and whatnot throughout. So let's see, what are some interesting chords we have? So first of all, the, the this is in the original tune, but it modulates from D major to. To F major, which is interesting. It's a, it's a it's a decently common modulation since it's going from D major to F major is just like going up a minor third, and for some reason that just works. You can just like do it, and it just works. You can quote me on that. Going up a minor third just works. <laughs> DS Music 2021. So there wasn't really much of a transition between, except for. Well, I did a little bit of a transition. I did this like harmon this arpeggiated line which leads into the first note of the next section. Like you see how the last note of that arpeggio is the A. And then the first note of the next section is B flat, so you know you're going up to the B flat, so that sort of adds a little bit of consonance to the modulation. Let's see, what is this chord? This is do Perfect pitch don't fail me now. That's G. That's G minor 7, I think. I think this is G minor over C, or G, it's just C9. F major 7. Just general major 7s, minor 7s, to add some more color to the chords. this let me just remember yeah so in order to get I wanted to add a little bit of interest to this section because this sec in the original tune this is just this just lingers on no in the original tune this is um F F7 B flat but I wanted to add a little bit of interest to it so I made this first chord F major 7, because that's basically the same as F. And this is... This is, um... E flat over F, I think? E flat over F. Yeah, because sometimes I just feel like, um... It's sort of like a 2... F um... It's sort of like a 2 five, one progression here. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like a 2-5-1 progression, where the 2-5-1 progression would be C minor, F major, B flat, but instead I did um, E flat over F, because just, you just have the F on the bottom because it's the same chord, same bass note as the last chord. And there's the F7, which is the 5, going to the 1, which is the B flat. So instead of just having F7 B flat, we have like a sort of two five one going on here. Plus, just having having a one of my favorite chords TBH is just having the the flat seven of a key on top of the bass note. So like it would be like B flat over C or E flat over F or A flat over B flat. That's just, that's just in general just one of my favorite chord progressions or chords and it works in like a lot of places. You can use it for two five ones. You can use it for 
sus fives. You can use it for all sorts of cool locations. And I, as I as I do more DS dissections, I can probably bring out some more areas. Like, oh, this is that court I was talking about. The cool flat seven over the base. Chromatic mediant. <laughs> What is it? What is this? What is this witchcraft? I have, I have, I don't think I've heard of it like that. But if that's what it do be, it definitely do be like that sometimes. If you have perfect pitch, what pitch am I thinking of night right now, Levi? You gotta know. You gotta know. I can't. I can't. I, I can't think of your mind if you're thinking micro. In your mind, you think microtonally, and I cannot. I cannot comprehend that. It's too big brain for my small brain. Anyway, let's keep going with the thing. I wish I had like a sheet music or like a MIDI I could show so that it would be like easy to like show what chords I'm doing besides like oh yeah look at the piano notes it's totally what I'm doing yes maybe I should do that for next time and then here we start to like crescendo with dynamics a little bit put on the pedal to add some more weight and then we get back to the recapitulation And this is like a culmination of basically everything. You have the full chord progression, you have the full melody, you have a bass line with like a double, with like an octave left hand hit for like extra oomph. You have a more developed counter melody with the um. <laughs> And yeah, you have every everything is coming together now. This is like when you're you're in the REM sleep. You are having the big dreams. You're having like ah oh, yes, mm, this is the good stuff. This is the good times. This is this is the this is the nostalgia right here. This is this is where the YouTubers put nostalgic piano cover. Totally not clickbait. It's this sort of thing. They build up to it with like with like dreamy chords. They build up slowly and quietly until it reaches the crescendo and then you have everything come together, everything you know and love, the big chords, the the arrangement techniques, the nice chords, the chord extensions, they all come together and they slowly build into your nostalgia and then like let it all out like dopamine. It's just feel good juice. You you have perfect pitch juice but know nothing about music theory so having fun watching the live stream. Oh yeah, perfect pitch can be both a burden and a curse because you can you can hear the notes, but then you can be like, oh yeah, that's the note, but like, what does it mean? What is it doing? Why is there? Why why is the note? Where is the hospital? The end game. Yeah, this, this is the end game portals moment, sort of. Because it's like yes, everything is coming together. But yeah, let's let's keep listening. And then this section right coming up right here. This is my f this is my favorite bit and it's like a little bit of everything, a little bit of piano showmanship cuz why not? Cuz you got to make it sound nice. It's 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 a it's very euphoric section I would feel. Alright, so let's break down on some of the things that happened here, because there's a lot of things that happened here, a lot of bombardment of the senses. First, a little fun fact. There is a mistake in this arrangement that I kept. Right here. That F sharp? That was a mistake. That was supposed to be an A major chord, so it was supposed to go from C sharp to E... No, C sharp to A to E. But instead, I accidentally hit F instead, so it became C sharp A F, which made it become an A augmented chord. But the thing is, for I liked it better because if you can like sort of listen, you can hear how the F sharp sort of leads into the F of the next chord. Do 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 do. It's, it just sounded neat. It matched the tone of the piece because there's a lot of augmented chords already in the piece. So like aug an augmented key chord there would not sound out of place. Plus just that phrasing of going from the F sharp, which is like the dissonant chord, 
the dissonant note in the chord and leads up to like the resolution in the F natural. It's like, mmm, that's a good mistake. That's a mistake you love to hear. It just works. That's, it just works. And then here's some of the things going on. You have like the left hand are big chords, the big rolling chords. Do 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 doom do 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 boom. Oh no, wait, I'm doing it wrong. It's um doom doom ba da da boom ba da da boom. You have the um right hand doing the um the arpeggio, the very euphoric like wee arpeggio. You. But the thing is, you have a third element going on, which makes this sort of like a three-handed piano arrangement. You have the melody going between the right hand and the left hand here. As you can see, the D on top is played, the do is played with the thumb of the right hand, and then as soon as the left hand's done rolling the chords, it plays the rest of the melody. So like... Like, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And then the right hand plays the last note of do, 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 do. And that sort of like just brings so many elements together and just makes it sound so uplifting and heartwarming and homey. And yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a cool resolution. Yeah, I thought the, um, the accidental resolution was pretty neat. We yes Tim, it's a very we moment. This is this is the this is the old this is when we think this is when we're full heartedly in the notion of this is Lon Lon Ranch. This is the where's my horse? Where's my horse? Where's my gosh dang horse moment where we're all having fun and having a good time. Except it's not gosh dang horse. It's you, you guys probably know what it actually is, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And uh, yeah. So as soon as we get to, but now here's the catch, as soon as we get to this big euphoric moment like you're just getting into the swing of things, then this happens. And then suddenly, it gets quiet. And then it's just suddenly weird and wonky. You have this little... You see the the video fade starts to come back in. You have just the melody playing, and you have this like odd chromatic scale under it. Now this is supposed to be the moment like you wake up and you're, like the memory's starting to fade, the dreams are starting to fade. You know, like you know the main gist of what happened. Like I was in a, I was in this airplane in space, and it was ice cream eating dinosaurs, and I was doing I don't know what. So this is like that part. You have the melody still there, but you don't remember any of like the. You don't remember any of the rhythms, there's no counter melody. It's just like, vague. There's no real harmonic chords attachment because you're just playing a chromatic scale. And then just, it goes back to the the big airy chords. And then you get the whole tone scale again. The very dreamy whole tone scale. This is the dream has ended. This is an inception cover now. <laughs> and it goes back to the thing from the beginning when you're like starting to dream about it. Except it's a little bit different. Like let's listen to it real quick. So you know that there's a bit more melody in here than the beginning. Whereas in the beginning, the melody didn't come in until like, what's it? Until like the third chord. The melody didn't come until like the third chord in the beginning. However, here, in the, at the ending... You hear that doo 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 right within the first chord. So this is supposed to be like the fading out. Like in the beginning, you were fading in. You were starting to pick up on beats and bits and pieces. And now this is the Alzheimer's moment. 
That's a, no, that's not a good. That's not a good way to put it. This is the um. This is, this is a waking up moment where you're like you remember bits and pieces of it, but it's starting to you're starting to forget it. You're starting to lose your grasp on it. So you still hear the bits and pieces. You hear the melody coming again here. Do do do. Do do. Then if you remember in the beginning, on this next chord, it goes up to the do 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 do. However, it's held on that note. And on that note, that's where you would expect to hear the melody come in. But it's just hanging there. It's like, yes, I remember there was something here. But what was it? What was it? And you just leave it hanging. And you don't hear it. But you only hear the chords. So this is like, the events are starting to fade, you only remember the general gist of it. And there's like no melody left. And that's the ending. And it's just, you remember the doo doo doo, those three notes, those iconic three notes. That's all you remember about it. It's just, this is what Long Long Ranch, all you remember about Long Long Ranch is, is that, is that place, there's the horses. You don't remember any of the good times. It's just... I mean, you do remember them in your memories, but for now, what how it is right now, it's all just in your nostalgia. It's only in your dreams. It's only in your. It's gonna sound. It's gonna sound very weird and like philosophical. It's all in your mind, man. But yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could have gone more in depth into like some of the like techniques and like the, some of the um. Like specific chords and stuff that I've wanted here, but there's no, I don't really have any good way to describe any of the chords. So, I've, yeah, it's this chord over that chord over that chord, and lots of people who like would like to see the chords like visually, like probably wouldn't learn that much out of it. So, next time I could probably like get a chord chart, or get like a PDF file or something to show with the um, no, with like the chords so people could see like how the notes flow into each chord, like flows into each other. Why was there actually so much thought to put into the narrative aspect of this arrangement? Good memories indeed. Oh, yo, Joe, how's it going? This is great. Appreciate it. Oh, God, you did. But yeah, um, I guess the reason for the narrative being was that I just, I just had this idea when I, I, well, you were around for the beginning, right? I mentioned how my idea for the arrangement was that, oh, I wanted to tell the story of Long Long Ranch, but from like a modern perspective of like, it's all run down and broken now. I don't know, it was just... It was just an idea based on, like, what I knew, my strengths for the pianist. Like, I knew, like, I'd like to make really intricate, like, chord progressions and stuff. I like to do lots of arpeggios, and those, like, lend themselves where to lend themselves well to airy, dreamy arrangements. And so I thought, that might be a good idea to make, like, a representation of, like, dreaminess with, like, having it based on nostalgia. So that way I wouldn't have to just like make a piano cover of Lawn Lawn Ranch like everyone else has. I want to put my own narrative spin on it. I don't know if that really gives like a good exclamation of like why that came to my head first. I don't know, it just kind of did. It's just how it it came it just played out. And I mean like I could do I could do the same thing for like other tracks, but like I feel like just this location within the Zelda universe like lends itself well based on how it's depicted on in Breath of the Wild F's again. Oh, it was more of a rhetorical question. Oops. <laughs> I just got freaking whooshed. Appreciate the arrangement even more after watching you breaking down. This was really cool. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's what I was looking to do was just to have you guys um, learn a bit of the music thing. See if you can see if you appreciate the arrangement more and see if I can, at least for me, at least it helps me from a teaching perspective. Like, clearly communicate my musical ideas with like a general audience of people of like musicians and non-musicians especially since i'm a conductor for the game symphony orchestra at my college and so it's a pretty useful skill to be able to describe like different bits and pieces of like video game music in different lights in order to like get the point of the piece across best it's like language arts but for music and video games yeah Go music theory. Let's go with him. Yes. 
Is this the first time you've done this kind of breakdown on one of your videos? Well, I've actually done this on streams a couple times. Like for my Metroid piano album, we went through the entire album and I gave like little bits and pieces about each thing. Did you know? <laughs> Did you know gaming? Did you know? that most people hated my Ridley Steam arrangement because it, was, it wasn't exactly the original, but they just didn't get that it's supposed to describe, like, being hunted by Ridley rather than fighting Ridley. Man, that's a, that's a, that's a moment I like to laugh at the boomers on Facebook who are like, this arrangement's no good, it doesn't sound like Ridley's name. But yeah, we did that, um, I think the first time I did this was back in when I released my Zelda album just, um, a few months ago. Um, wait, let me see. Oh, I don't think I... Tim, Tim. Can you link the Zelda album to the YouTube people, please? But yeah, for when my Zelda album released, my Breath of the Wild album released, um, we did this thing with each of the... Which, um, a couple of my videos. Because it was my birthday, so I just wanted to go through a couple of my videos and, like, describe, like, like, some of my favorite ones. And I was like, you know what? This is really fun. I feel like viewers enjoy it. I enjoy it. Might as well just try it more, but like for every single video that I release and see what see what happens. See if people like it. How dare they? That cover was legendary. I know, right? Imagine boomers. That's just a theory. A music theory. And take. And what do music people in the music industry say when they finish a cut? I don't know. But yeah. So once again, you you guys gotta let me know what time do you think would be best for these like music theory video analyses? Do you like them like right now as they are like right after the video releases? Would you prefer them like later in the evening, which I can't do today because of obligations and like, or would you like them on Saturdays? Would you like them on Sundays? Would you like them on? I was gonna say Friday. Friday gotta get down on Friday, but today is today is Friday. Gosh. Hey, did you all know there was a new remix of Friday by Rebecca Black uploaded? I liked that remix for three seconds. <laughs> There's three seconds which actually made me like n think nostalgically. Because it was like big, you know, what I was talking about, those big airy chords and like piano. I was like, man, this makes me nostalgic for when this first released in like the early 2000s. And then the remix just became the remix again. I was like, oh, okay, fine, have it your way. Oh yeah, this is a great time for you at least. Oh, that's good to hear. But yeah, so make sure let me know whether it be in YouTube comments, in Twitter comments, in Twitch chat, in on my Discord server or stuff like that. Let me know what you think of what time these things should be um, live streamed at. Also, the VODs will still be available on my channel for y'all to watch later too. Will should be great. And also, make please. <laughs> this is gonna sound very like. Grasp me as straws. I, I'm very sorry for making this sound very cringy, but for the Honda Zelda videos, if y'all could um make sure to hit like, leave a comment, that'd be great because I've been off of YouTube for like seven months, and you know the YouTube algorithm is like if you don't upload every day, we're gonna like just gonna ignore you. So getting that engagement rate up would definitely help with like making sh with helping support the channel and making sure like people get to see the rest of my covers that I start putting up every week, every week Friday at two. And let me just say, the like and subscribe button, they're free. It's free real estate. Just hit it. Just, just hit the like and subscribe. It's that easy. It's literally, literally free. Literally two seconds of your time. Click, click. There. Spiel done. Anyways, that is the first DS Dissex. Hope you all had a great time. You can't hit like on Twitch. <laughs> well, just hit the subscribe button. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait a moment. I mean, on Twitch, if, if you're on Twitch, then you can... Following is, um... Even though follow, I don't, you can follow if you wanna. It's, it's another two seconds of your time. You'll get very funny notifications where I tag you in comments. <laughs> Twitch is great. Twitch is neat. Twitch has fun emotes. But YouTube is also great and fun and neat because there's a lot of people. There's actually more people on YouTube than Twitch this time, I think, which is kind of interesting. And also let me know if there's any other songs that you want guys want me to just general music theory breakdowns of. Like, you know how Charles Charles Cornell or like Alex Mokala like do like producer or pianist reacts to the me channel music or mm, history of the world, I guess, or something like that. I could do I could try my hand at like a music theory analysis of one of those. But yeah, that's gonna be all for today. I do not have a fancy ending screen, but um make sure to check out the album that this is from actually in order to end the album and end the stream we're gonna listen to my favorite tune from this album it's an absolute bop 
We're just gonna hold up. Ah, spoilers. Gosh, I'm so bad at freaking my Chrome is just lagging so hard. Gosh. So you know, you all know the tune inside the house from Ocarina of Time. It's like when you're inside Link's hut when you just wake up in the beginning of the game. Well, this is remix on the album by Zeno Keys and John Montoya. It's an absolute funky bop. Absolute. Can we get cat jams in the chat if this will load? If this will load. Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad it doesn't cat jam doesn't work on YouTube. Listen to that talk box though. Hey, you know, you guys are not ready for the breakdown. Doesn't it have that Mario Kart Wii vibe to it? It's so good. Anyways, I will catch you guys later. What was next week on the next DS Dissect? Stay tuned for that. And I hope you all have a good afternoon. I'll see you later and have. And, uh. Oh, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the correct button? There it is. And, uh. Yeah, see you guys next week. And stay epic. Bye, up.